home for his aunt. She died last Thursday, and his funeral was today. The ground rules are on the back of the agenda. Basically, turn off all papers and cell phones. Uh, we're being videotaped. Uh, no uh, hackling or name calling, please. We want to create a safe environment which every participant feels free to speak by reserving um, and no negativity. Speak responsibly, emphasize the positive. Do not interrupt another speaker or engage in side conversation or other distracting behavior when others are speaking. This is a stakeholders meeting. We know the possibility candidates for public office may be in attendance. Please be respectful of the event organizers. We will be asked to take their activities outside if it becomes disruptive. This is the Alliance for Better District 6 sponsored event. Only 2014 paid members can vote on any motion made during the meeting. And of course, we have a donation. We have a donation jar. If anybody wants to make a donation, Susan will pass around the jar. If you get a whip of coffee, it's because it's a coffee jar. <laughs> I'll start here, just pass it along, and then I'll get up the other end. As for our membership, the Alliance for Better District 6 is a nonpartisan, nonprofit civic educational organization devoted to increasing low and very low income participation in the elections and government. They do they, we do voter registration, research issues, engage residents in policy and civic leadership. In other words, we are truly helping bring people together around solutions that can benefit benefit all of us. An informed citizenry is an engaged one. Please join us. So we're all we're always open to memberships and individual membership is twenty-five dollar a year. That's your low income and it's fifteen. Okay. My name is Marvis Phillips. I'm interim executive director, land use chair, public safety chair, parliamentarian, and I live upstairs on the twelfth floor. Hi, Dennis Eisner, I'm uh, the Administrative Officer for the Alliance. Uh, Susan Bryan, I'm the uh, Treasurer of Alliance for a Better District 6 and uh, Central City Democrats, as well as being a resident. Marie Dugan. 
and he died about 25 years ago. And unfortunately, you have to have a living person to transfer a liquor license. So there's no rules in place at ABC on what to do if the owner is dead. So it's been in limbo for about six months while they're trying to figure out how to get a liquor license that's active out of a dead person, basically, in a nutshell. I know what, that's what's going on. That's all I know about. Um, and we'll go to Barbara Hall. to becoming members of Lions for Better District 6 and North Market Business Association? We're not familiar with that. We're certainly active in the bid, and we're active in uh, Travel San Francisco. We're mm -hmm. all looking to the North Market Business Association. Yeah, so. it, it, we have, there is South Market Business Association, right. a Samba. Uh, that's been around for a little longer than the North Market Business Association, but we, we liaise if you can share that information, I'd be delighted to look into it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the, uh, it's the police department, right? you know, we've been very, very transparent on this whole, there's nothing. 
it's just a restaurant. It's really the essence of it. I'm going to ask you, um, would you want us to write a letter of support for an events uh, place permit or place entertainment permit? We appreciate that, yeah. sure. Please. What, then, would, would you want to, I mean, we're happy to have you over and show you the space and give you an outline of what we've thought so far. The initial thoughts are to have an uh, acoustic guitar or a trio up towards the front of the restaurant in our little lounge area. I mean, happy to show you the whole place. And, you know, I don't know what the criteria for you to write a letter of support. Um, a motion from my, my board members. Okay. Okay. Well, and I'm sorry, I, uh, what is... Is there a timeline? Do you have a, uh, a hearing coming up? Or there is a hearing. Uh, there is a hearing. I want to say it's the, it's the second week, I think, in July. It's the 13th. Okay. I should have noticed it on the notice calendar. Okay. Uh, I should share with you the Bartlett name came from Colin Bartlett. Colin Bartlett was the first accolade uh, who, in 1842, I believe, identified and wanted to rename Yuma Gwyn in San Francisco. So there's a lot of historic history in the space. The building's been around 100 years. We acknowledge that in the premises. Um, if you look at the far coasters, they have stories about uh, some of the players, if you will, in the neighborhood. Um, so some of the, the characters and the like. So I mean, we're obviously a business, but we we take the history of the city and and seriously and, and incorporated that into part of our motif and our our story. Um, I, I think, you know, does that give us the right to do everything now? But I think it, it's it's nice to, that we're we're acknowledging that, um, and we hope, you know, as Richard said, we're, we're transparent. We're uh, there was a representative from the fire department there today in the series of checks that we need to go through for the entertainment um, permit. I talked to her briefly, and she looked down. You know, we're, we're pretty clean. We, we like to run a clean ship. That's a way to go to run, run a good business. Yeah. Would you be willing to do a fundraiser for us? Sure, we can say that. We're looking for all the looking for places to fundraise. Okay. And I'm sure that that's you know, part of the reason why you're applying for this, so that you can host various events and functions and things. Um, and what you like last week then? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I don't know if you'd have that man. My taste of music, but. Uh, no. And, uh, and I'm, you have to refresh. By what is the capacity? Of uh, 214 standing, 194 seating. And it is all fully built out, and you'll see it's all tables and chairs. And they'll also, we also have a sidewalk project. Yeah, I picked up a Any other questions? Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks for for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Make a motion to support to write a letter of support for the place of entertainment. Place of entertainment. Uh, license. I second. All those in favor? All in favor? Aye. Any objections? No. Any abstentions? Only three of us here. Uh, <laughs> you know, it makes business easy. Okay. Um, other people were supposed to show up on the agenda were the reopening of the Cadillac Bar and Grill at 1355 Market. We're also protesting that liquor license. Um, OMG, uh, which is, a, I understand, a nightclub, which went for a place entertainment permit. And they were told by the Entertainment Commission they have to get a conditional use permit. And they were supposed to come and do a presentation on getting their conditional use. Um, including, thanks. Okay. Are, you there, are you here to also do an overview of your agency? Uh, sure. Okay. I mean, what I, I envisioned was, which I talked to other people in mayor's office workforce, the economic workforce, you know, is one get an overview of who, who the department is and their role within the community, and then have them talk about the Moscone. Sure. Thanks. Um, 
I'm Adam Van Water in Economic Development. Uh, our office is the Office of Economic and Workforce Development does a, a number of different things. I'm on the economic development side. We do uh, large scale public private partnerships um, like the Moscone expansion, but also uh, the Mission Rock development down at Seawall Off 337 with the San Francisco Giants, um, the Warriors Basketball Arena, uh, the Forest City Project in Pier 70. America's Cup, um, other projects like it. Um, over the years, uh, we have the city's director of culture of uh, special events is in our office, works very closely with um, uh, you. Um, special on one day and weekend, uh, we do long special events in the city. And then we have our Invest in Neighborhoods team, um, which I thought you may find interesting. I brought a few um, general updates on what they're doing in terms of neighborhood commercial. They do business attraction and retention and streetscape improvements. And um, they were the ones that worked on the mid market uh, business tax exclusions and some of the community benefit agreements with the community benefit districts. Um, so I can pass out uh, some general information on what they do. Um, and then there's the workforce side of our office that does city build, uh, local hire, um, and apprenticeship programs for new hire uh, across the city along with some of those. So I'm on the economic development side. Um, one of my projects is the Moscone expansion. I don't have a PowerPoint or anything formal, but I did print out copies of the last um, public meeting. Um, and you can see some renderings in here um, as a ground of uh, what we're planning on that site. Um, briefly, uh, Moscone opened in 1981 and has been expanded in phases to keep up with demand and with the economy. Um, and we expanded in 1992 and then built uh, Moscone West in 2003. Uh, we've been, for the last two years, planning an expansion to the existing facility, uh, which, as you know, that area in Yerba Buena is a uh, dense and uh, very well used and well loved part of town between the conventions, the park, uh, the arts and cultural facilities that surround it, affordable housing, um, and neighborhood serving uh, commercial and retail. Uh, so the footprint is very uh, tight, and we're going to do two things, starting uh, with pre-construction at the end of this calendar year. Uh, the draft EIR is, is on the streets now, uh, and public comments um, we copy here. Um, we're soliciting public comments by next week, at which point the planning department will start summarizing response to comments, and we'll go back to the planning commission and appeal to the board of supervisors. The idea would be to start pre-construction at the end of the calendar year, and real major construction starting um, next year, and to do it in phases over a four-year time period, so we don't have to shut the center down. The center itself brings in $1.8 billion per year to the city economy, and we can't take that offline. So we're going to do it in phases where we take a portion of the building um, and I kind of wall it off for construction and have a, uh, a convention around it. Um, we just finished two years ago a $56 million tenant improvement inside with new wayfinding and elevators and carpet and paint and screens and things. Um, and that was literally done with hundreds of crew coming in 20, 30 minutes after a convention. This is the last convention year leaves working overnight and through the weekend until the next one comes in. So this is just that same concept on a much larger scale. Um, ultimately, it adds about 300,000 net new square feet to the building um, and repurposes some of the back of the house, especially below grade. We're going to blow out a little bit of um, dirt underneath Howard Street to create a continuous exhibition hall underground. Anybody been inside Moscone is not something that a lot of San Franciscans get into. I've actually worked the past, I've worked a lot of, like, in my line of work, a lot of, like, events and special events. I've worked the last two uh, Dream Force events, and which came up the entire right. so, yeah. If you don't work in the building, um, there's really only one public show, which is the auto show. Um, mostly it's uh, medical, tech, um, and other conventions coming to town. The clients all want contiguous space. So downstairs, you know, there's the two big halls and there's a connector in between, but you don't have sight lines between if you're exhibiting. If you're in the fancy food show and you've got cupcakes over here and you got candy over there and you can't see this too. So a mem member of the public, you may not see everything. So we're gonna expand that. In order to do that, we need to move some of the below grade meeting rooms somewhere else. 
and you're going to start to see those for the first time above 